Hello, welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. French President Emmanuel Macron is in India for a state visit. He is the chief guest for India's Republic Day Parade. The French President was welcomed by External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar after landing at the Jaipur Airport. Macron first visited the Ambeer Fort with Jay Shankar, Rajasthan's Deputy Chief Minister Dia Kumari. He interacted with local artisans and students. Later, Macron also visited the Solar Observatory at Jantar Bantar with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where the duo shared a hug. Both Prime Minister and Macron also held a mega roadshow in Jaipur. The French President's visit also comes at the 25th anniversary celebrations for India-France Strategic Partnership. All right, uh, let's uh, go across to our guests at this juncture. The President of Business France, Pascal Cagney. Uh, Ambassador Pascal, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, give me a sense of the sectors in India that you are most excited about and what makes you confident about the India-French partnership at this juncture? You know, uh, Baikshit, that um, if you think about what we're going to leave, which is the 3D, the deglobalizations, the decarbonizations, as well as the digitalizations on all of these three area, uh, France and India partnership is absolutely unique. You need to recall that on the digitalizations we're welcoming in France, uh, thousands of jobs created by the large company on you as uh, of India in the IT services like HCL, WIPO, and Tata services. In the meantime, Capgemini do have here in India in excess of 200,000 employees. On the deglobalizations, it's obvious that coming from the non-aligned status, we've got in the current fight in between China and US a role to play together with the renewed role that uh, France took, leading Europe in many ways post the Brexit. And when you think about the decarbonization, which is a very topical subject, uh, we've got kind of a head start in Europe. We have 75% of energy, which is coming from essentially low carbon uh, sources with a clear leadership on nuclear, and you are one of the few nuclear states. We're also very strong on using hydrogen um, and other alternative sources. For all these reasons, we have been actually coming here in these two days visits, uh, really celebrating these uh, renewed partnerships by uh, bringing some unique core technology that we could bring to, uh, to India, uh, either in the nuclear states, in, fish, in uh, fusions, or into the hydrogen sectors. And we also have some am amazing agri-tech companies to allow you to address a world by which water will be also a concern. So that's really kind of the scope of right. what we're trying to do together. Right. Uh, Ambassador Pascal, you spoke about nuclear energy. We have been reading reports about how uh, France and India could collaborate on setting up small modular nuclear reactors. Uh, is that something that you expect some movement on during this visit? No, we've got absolutely on the SMR concept, which has been kind of a renewed focus of the last one or two years, uh, visit and exchanges. Um, we will not have a search MOU or anything specifics which can be disclosed. But the fact that we've got, thanks to the amazing French tech uh, and French fab movement that we've got in France, we've got many young companies, extremely well funded with a very strong IP in uh, intellectual property um, assets, which are basically uh, talking and addressing the Indian market. We believe that we can bring something in a very modest way to the India, the subcontinent of India. And as a follow-up of the National Day's uh, gathering that we had in our own country in France back on the July 14th last year, we're very pleased to continue mm -hmm. and actually the talks. And me as the chairman of uh, Business France, which is the national agency, we have as a role to basically bring the best of what France has to offer and also to welcome whatever um, key investors coming from India to come in Europe. Because you need to realize right. that past the Brexit, which do have now a six, seven year stance, France has become the most attractive country in Europe for the last four years. We have the best springboard for any large um, Indian groups, 
willing to basically go after the 500 uh, really wealthy uh, market, which is Europe's. So the concept of having our right. hexagon, France as a springbok, is really at the core of what we do. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Pascal, for joining us and telling us about the broad uh, trajectory of the India-France business relations going forward. Thank you. Shifting focus to the Israel-Hamas war, over 26,000 Palestinians have lost their lives since the Israel-Hamas conflict began. Israeli forces have stepped up attacks in southern Gaza, forcing thousands to flee the neighborhood. Hundreds of Palestinians are trapped in two hospitals in Khan Yunus as Israeli troops encircled Gaza's second largest city. UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron met Israeli Prime Minister in Jerusalem and highlighted the importance of a two-state solution. Qatar has accused Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu of deliberately obstructing a ceasefire and hostage release negotiations. This after to Netanyahu allegedly criticized Qatar's mediation efforts. Meanwhile, Yemeni uh, Houthi rebels fired missiles at merchant ships off the Yemen coast. In retaliation, the U.S. and British forces carried out joint strikes aimed at Houthi military targets. To take this forward, we are now joined by Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, spokesperson of the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, Colonel Lerner, let me begin by asking you, currently the offensive by Israel is focused on southern Gaza. What is the Israeli forces actually looking at at this juncture in terms of the immediate objective? Uh, and how long will this operation continue? Thank you. The IDF is continuing its operations, broadening the scope in the south of uh, the Gaza Strip, particularly in the area of Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is Gaza's second largest city and indeed the birthplace of Hamas's leader, uh, Yechia Sinwar, who is, um, feels very, very much at home in Khan Yunus. What we found just in the uh, operations over the last few weeks is the extensive, expansive, and probably the most expensive uh, construction project, project ever to take place in the Gaza Strip, namely the subterranean tunnel system that Hamas had held over 20 uh, hostages in over the course of this war. And indeed, we are moving our operations forward in order to dismantle and destroy and effectively crush Hamas as a governing authority of the Gaza Strip, we understand that they cannot be trusted with the powers of government because with the powers of government, they build a terrorist army that came into our bedrooms, uh, butchered our babies, our women, our men, our elderly, and abducted to over 240 of them into Gaza. So we are on our route in order to dismantle and destroy Hamas and bring home the hostages. Right. Uh, as this war rages on, it's already been 110 days uh, and many experts and countries want to know what will be the trajectory of this war and what will it take to bring it to an end. So what is the stated objective currently, uh, Peter, Peter Lerner? Uh, you know, the world has perhaps very little patience, but unfortunately, um, the reality is one that Hamas have been planning for this day for over 16 years. So there is no quick fix to dismantling their terrorist infra infrastructure. There is no quick fix in dismantling and destroying their operational capabilities. Uh, we are moving forward. We are dismantling and destroying each and every tunnel that we run into, the places where they have hidden, the places where they've established their command and control capabilities. Um, the war will be over once they have been removed from the governing capability of Hamas, where they will no longer be able to organize terrorist attacks and, and, and conduct an onslaught that we experienced on the 7th of October. Um, the second component of our war effort is to bring home the hostages. And indeed, there are two trajectories that could be uh, pursued in this, in this regard. First of all, obviously, the diplomatic effort that you mentioned in the opening. And obviously, we are trying to create operational and intelligence uh, capabilities to bring home the hostages as well. So I would say those all of, all of the components of our goals of this war, they work hand in hand and they are a combined effort. Um, we are determined to change the paradigm once and for all to make the south of, the, of Israel, but also beyond the south of Israel, safe and secure for all of the people living in the region. All right, uh, Peter Lerner, thank you very much for joining us on the program, telling us about Israel's latest offensive against the Hamas and uh, what could be the potential response from Israel depending on the ICJ verdict. We're taking a short break here on the program. Up next, our focus on West Asia tensions continues. We catch up with John Bolton, 
former U.S. Uh, national security advisor under the Trump administration. We speak to him about the trajectory of this war in the Middle East and the way it's spreading and also the possibility of things, of geopolitics, if Donald Trump returns as president.